Hi folks, welcome to Greg's Workshop. I'm Greg and today we're going to be making some upgrades and updates to my 1955 Delta Milwaukee 14 inch bandsaw. I recently purchased this bandsaw off Craigslist uh, from a gentleman, I never actually met him, I, I met his son, but a gentleman who uh, had a really nicely set up shop, uh, was downsizing, uh, retiring, and uh, he was getting rid of all the tools. Serial number says this is 1955. It is in fantastic shape for being that old. I don't know if it's been rehabbed or repainted, but man, it's, it's just, it's a beautiful saw. Let's take a closer look. Let's start up at the top here. That paint is just gorgeous. There's some normal corner scuffing, nothing really unusual there. I wonder if this has been repainted. Uh, it, it had to have been, it's a 68 year old saw. Has the six inch riser block. Runs straight, runs true. Came with a box of blades. Give you an idea of how, uh, how old the blades are. Some of them still have price tags on them with single digits, like, like $3. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Got that portable base. The previous owner actually built that. I welded it up himself. He had a lot of metalworking stuff in the shop. Um, motor inside, three quarter horsepower, uh, wired for 110, can go to 220 uh, if that's what I desire in the future. We're going to start off with the wiring. If there's anything you should probably upgrade on a 70 year old tool, it's the wiring. You can see it already has a modern switch. The cord's been replaced. A uh, couple things I want to change. This is just a regular start stop. I have a safety paddle switch. That's right about knee height for me. So I think that'll work well. Uh, so I'm going to put that on. I think I can, we'll see. I think I can probably just replace the cover without replacing the whole switch, but we'll find out in a minute. Also the cord comes out this side. I want it to come out back here um, because that's where the wall is going to be and it's pushed up against the wall and that's just way more convenient for me. Um, so we'll get a uh, hole drilled in that side. I've got some rubber grommets. Um, we'll have to pull the cord out and everything, but uh, let's get to it. So when the previous owner replaced this switch, uh, it actually just has a household junction box um, inside. And loosening this top screw, it seems like the junction box isn't really actually secured to the sheet metal. So we'll pull this off. It'll probably fall down inside. Let's see if there's a way to secure it. see if these will match up. Oh yeah. So those match up. Um, so really I don't have to deal with this wiring at all. In fact, it's the exact same switch uh, on the inside. So I'm good there. This switch. Yeah, I can also, if I want to convert this to 220, I can use the same switch. I just have to switch around the wiring. So uh, we'll just put this right back on. Trick's going to be getting it lined up now, but see what I can do. reach around the access panel <clears throat> on the other side. It seems about right. Let's see if I'm in the hole. Boy, it sure feels like it. Yep, I'm getting there tightened up. Well, that's easy. Glad that wasn't a big deal. <clears throat> so we'll tighten this almost all the way. We'll get the other switch put in or other screw rather. If I can get it lined up properly, that's going to be the trick. It looks like it's going in. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Make sure that's nice and straight before I get everything tightened down. All right, nice and tight. Start, stop plug it in real quick just to be sure. Perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is get that cord taken care of. It comes out the front of the machine. That's just a trip hazard as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to put it around the back. Also, uh, let's see if you can see right there, they drilled a pretty big hole to like where you can put the whole plug through. There's just no reason for that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the plug off. We're going to drill an appropriately sized hole, put a rubber grommet in it, make the hole just big enough for the cord. I'm using a step drill bit to drill this hole. 
It's the right tool to use for thin sheet metal like this. After drilling a hole in thin sheet metal, it's important to deburr both sides of the hole, the inside and the outside, so the grommet sits flush. You can get packages of grommets of various sizes all in one box off Amazon or like I did at a flea market. They're a really good thing to have around. So it's a pretty tight fit, which is what you want. I selected this particular grommet because of the size difference between the internal hole and the hole that I drilled here. So there's lots of rubber uh, between the edge of that metal and the cord itself. And honestly, this cord won't be subject to that much load anyway. Um, it's going to be, you know, at most maybe bent like that. Uh, it's not going to be tugged on. I'm going to leave a little slack on the inside so it doesn't touch the motor. But uh, I think we're good to put the plug back on. Next upgrade is the guide blocks. And these have high speed steel blocks. Some bandsaws have bearings. Um, there is a conversion kit available for this. I may uh, do that in the future, but for now, I'm gonna try out the cool blocks. These are graphite impregnated phenolic resin, phenolic laminate, something like that. Anyway, they're supposed to make the blade run cooler. Some people swear by them, some people swear at them. They're about 20 times cheaper than the ball bearings. So we'll, uh, we'll start with this and see how it goes. They fit a little loose. I don't think that's a big problem because they're going to be clamped down by the uh, by the set screws. So we want them just to where they're just barely not touching the blade, is what they say. I'll make that just so there's there's touching. There's pushing it to the next block over right about there. I'll do the same on the bottom, off camera. Let's move on to the next upgrade. The bane of any old tool like this is dust collection. It just didn't exist in the 50s. So we're going to do a test cut here, and you can see all the dust that comes out. It doesn't get collected. It all piles up around the table, around the base, pretty much everywhere. So most modern saws are going to have a dust port here or on the back, back here. Simplest would be to drill a hole right here and put in a dust port. I don't want to do that. I, uh, a saw this old, I, I'm as much a steward as I am an owner and a user. I want to keep it just as original as I can while still being safe and functional. So I've got a couple options. Um, one is to just buy another cover and drill a hole in that one. Sort of, sort of this one, set it aside. Problem with that is the gap. If you can see right here, there's about a quarter inch gap there and the dust is just gonna fall out. Um, what I think I'm gonna do, well, what I am gonna do, I'm gonna try to do in the rest of this video, is build a wooden cover for this with a dust port. So we'll take this off, we'll get some measurements, get a piece of plywood, some side blocks cut, and uh, hopefully that'll work well for a dust port. I love, love, love my track saw. I also love my table saw. I'm gonna get this board cut down to proper height and proper width. I'm using this piece of pine for the sides of the dust guard. Some scrap I had laying around, it's nice and clear, it's nice and straight, I think it'll do well. 
So for the next part, I'm going to be using my dado stack. I've already removed the blade guard. I've already, already removed the normal brake cartridge. I've inserted the dado brake cartridge. I'm just going to start by putting in that outer blade. A couple of these guys, which probably have names and I just don't know what they are. Rippers? I, I'm not really sure. And then the outer blade. So that'll be about half an inch. I'm gonna be looking for a 3 8 inch dado altogether. 3 8 by 3 8 uh, Kind of show you what that looks like. Um, and in order to get that, we're gonna be using my auxiliary fence. Um, so basically about an eighth of an inch of this dado stack will be covered by the fence, not this fence obviously, but, uh, but the wooden one uh, that I made specifically for this purpose. And lastly, data plate. Now for the auxiliary fence. It's just two pieces of MDF that I glued together, drilled some holes in the top, picked up some fence clamps from PowerTech on Amazon. It just clamps on like so. <clears throat> now this is the first time I've used it so there's no little arc cut out right here so what we need to do slide this over about like so so it's maybe covering that dado by half uh, or a quarter of an inch something like that. We'll turn it on raise it up so we get that little arc in there and hopefully we can get because it's fresh <clears throat> right off the bat so we'll go to just below that little mark I made. I'll bring that around so you can see it. No, I don't think you can see it. Anyway, there's a little mark right there, three eighths of an inch up, the thickness of that plywood. So we'll turn it on and we'll uh, get our depth set. Now that we have our height or depth, I guess you could say set, we want to set the width here. So we're, again, we're going to use that piece of three quarter inch plywood, slide it over to where it's just flush with the outside of those carbide teeth, right about there. And then we'll run a test piece through. Now the test piece doesn't need to be your final, you know, your final piece. Uh, it can be just a piece of scrap. Uh, this is a 2x4. This is the 2x4 that I ripped at the beginning of the video to show you how much dust that saw creates. So we'll give this a shot and uh, see if we need to make any adjustments. I've got that cut. Fits pretty well in that direction and then if we put it flip it up put it in this direction also fits pretty well you can see there's there's just the tiniest little overhang that's okay we'll take care of that with the with the sander but I think that looks good so now we'll run our side pieces through for something like this where I'm going to have two more or less identical pieces I like to make it long do all the machining or the the routing or the datoing whatever it is and then cut it in half to final length. So this is basically what our cover is going to look like. So piece of plywood on the front, two pieces on the sides. So you can see these little back rabbits. Those are going to go around the edge of the cast iron until it curves down around here, in which case I'm going to have some plywood cut to sort of fill those gaps and then there will be the exhaust hose right about here.
before we get this test fitted, we need to make a cutout for some of the stuff underneath the table here. Kind of drawn out a rough outline. So I'll cut this on the bandsaw, sort of a guess and check thing. We'll see how it fits. I may need to adjust it a little bit uh, and then uh, we'll get the holes drilled for the bolts. Have the guard cut, a little bit of tear out there. I'll have to fix that, not a problem. I also had to cut out this notch on the other side. So the next thing to do is get it up in here, put it on and mark the spots for these uh, mounting posts. So we can get those drilled out and then we can get it farther in and see how it fits. Unfortunately, I can't really get to this one. We'll start with one up here, move on. Let's figure out how to do it. Centered that hole, measured over, they're both the same height, measured over 12 and three quarter inches, which is the distance center to center, and measured up the proper distance here to get even. We're gonna be using my spade bit, and we're gonna be doing the drill halfway through, flipping around, drill over the other side. Otherwise, we're just gonna blow out that outer surface. That's no good. And we'll flip it over. Complete the holes. So when you're doing something like this, really it's just a, it's a guess and check. You're measuring, you're cutting, you're cutting a little close, figuring you need to cut a little closer. It's really just kind of by guess and by golly to begin with until you get to that point. All right, so looks like it fits. It fits around the edge of that. On the back side here, I'll show you. I've got a little, uh, little structure cut around right here when that comes out. So I'll trace that out, we'll cut it out. Um, and then I think it's pretty close to where it needs to be. Put the dust port in. One thing I hadn't really thought about, with this increased thickness, it moves these nuts out. So the sheet metal's, you know, 16th of an inch thick. This is 3 8 um, The threads on these knobs, they're actually all the way back here. I thought they were, you know, down here, so it'd be fine. I could just get a little, you know, three eighths or whatever thread on there. But as it is, um, the threads sticking out are too short to use these knobs, which is unfortunate, but uh, that's okay. I'll have some nuts right now. I'll get some new knobs with the, the threads in the bottom uh, to fix that or, or some wing nuts or something. So it's uh, pretty much good on this side. Everything seems to fit. So what I, now what I need to do is I need to make the filler pieces for right here. Same on the other side. And then up top here, there's a great big gaping hole. I need to fill that too. So to describe this, I've got this piece of wood ripped to the widest width that it's gonna to need to be, inch and five eighths. A little bit of slack, that's okay. We want that, we want that airflow, uh, especially with the four inch dust collector I'm gonna be using. So we're gonna clamp that way up top so it's out. Of, the clamp is out of the way. We want <clears throat> this inside edge just even with the inside edge of that rabbit. I've cut a little block off the top that's the proper length. So ideally I would have a compass, a, you know, a little point and a, a, um, a pencil to draw that. Uh, I don't though. So we're gonna kind of do a, a little bit of a different compass. We'll see, uh, see how that works. So we're gonna put that corner right there, pencil right there. And as we get to kind of the apex, so to speak, of that curve, we're going to be switching the pencil on the bottom because that bottom corner is going to be writing, and so we need the pencil over here. I'm probably going to block the, cam block the camera angle when I do that, but I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. Well... It's a line, let's see what we get. All right, see what we got. Boy, that's pretty close. I think I need just a little bit right there. Conveniently, there's already a pencil mark I should have cut to. <laughs> All right, 
I'll do the same on the other side. We'll get everything put together. Time for final fitment. I've got my top guard in place. I've got those two back filler pieces. We'll see if it fits first. Might have to do a little more clearancing just to get it to fit around all the stuff. We'll see. Well, it's tight, but it fits. That's all right. I won't be pulling this off a whole bunch. Uh, just really blade changes. That's the only reason we'll be doing that. So everything fits well. Those gaps are nicely sealed, but there's still just a tiny little air gap uh, to let air through. So if it's perfectly sealed, that's a spot where dust can collect. So if there's just the tiniest little air gap around the edge, that allows the air to come in and clear the dust out from there. Kind of same along the bottom here and on the, the bottom on the backside of the bandsaw. You know, the bandsaw has two feet that come down and there's about a little half inch of open space there. So that'll allow airflow through to suck up the dust as well. Uh, the other thing I wanted to check that I forgot to, didn't really have a chance to, is my tilt and my tilt. Looks good, completely unaffected. I like it. All right, let's get the dust port installed. I think I'm gonna put it right about here. Um, that way, as the blade comes around, you know it's gonna fling the sawdust this way. So if I put it over here, some of that sawdust is gonna make its way past and then collect over in that corner. I think this is probably the best place to put it. Um, plus it's out of the way. You know, I'm gonna be standing right here, so it's off to the left of my leg. I think that's the right place. It's got this universal dust port from Rockler yesterday. I'm gonna put it right about there. Mark that. And most importantly, mark out the inner circle. So I'm gonna cut this. It's important when you're cutting something like this, um, where we're not gonna, if it was a router, you know, we cut inside and then we put that over and template it, but I, I don't have room to do that. Uh, so this line represents the inside of this circle. And we want this, the cut to be on the outside of that line so that this hole is slightly larger than that circle. That way we get the most airflow we can. And then once it's cut, I'm gonna, on the back, I'm gonna round off the edges uh, so that there's, there's not that sharp angle. So it's more of a, I don't know, laminar flow, I think is the proper term. To secure it, we're gonna be using these number 12 truss head screws. So the truss head, the head's a little bit wider, so it'll give us a little bit more support. You know, the hose is gonna be hanging kind of off the end and, and kind of torquing it off. So I wanna have some nice strong threads and some nice wide heads, so hopefully that'll, uh, that'll stay put. And now we'll get it secured. I'm using my impact driver on the lowest torque setting. I certainly don't want to strip out the holes. Just like anything else, you don't tighten everything the first one down. You put everything in loose until you have them all in. And then you can tighten down the last one. Let's redo that test cut. See what we got here. Not perfect by any means, but much, much improved. There was a little pile of dust right there where the blade comes out last time. There's nothing on the back side. There's almost nothing up top. I did forget to vacuum the floor down there. So that's, uh, well, that's just how it is. All right, I think I'm ready to call this one uh, done. And there you have it, folks. An updated, upgraded classic. This bandsaw, I think, will do just about everything I need to do, uh, unless I start milling logs or something. This bandsaw will last me pretty much forever. What about this bare wood, though? Should I paint it? 
Should I stain it? Should I just clear coat it? Should I leave it be and let it patina? Uh, what do you think? Leave a comment down below. Folks, if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified of new videos every other week, give or take, and I'll see you next time on Greg's Workshop.